Hey mathematicians, we're going to talk about divisibility rules, which are rules about dividing numbers that can help you recognize really quickly whether or not this division problem is going to work. Okay, so numbers that are divisible by two. What are they? Oh, let me move my, my face over here. What are they? Okay, so anything that you can divide by two is actually like a multiple of two. So if we think of multiples of two, that's two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, all of these, which means that they can also actually then be divided by two. So if I give you 84, you should be able to say, hmm, yeah, I can divide that into two groups equally with no remainder because it's a multiple of two. So anything that ends in a two, like in this column here, right here, anything that ends in a four, anything that ends in a six, anything that ends in an 8, or anything that ends in a 10, all of those numbers can be divided by 2. The 3s, in my opinion, are super cool. You know that you can divide a number by 3 with no remainder if the digital sum is divisible by 3. What the heck is a digital sum? Okay, let's look at all the multiples of 3. Here they are. Isn't that cool? They make like a diagonal pattern. This is what I mean by digital sum. Three, there's only one digit, just the three. You can divide three by three, that's one. Twelve, well, let's check out one plus two, that equals three, and you can divide three by three, so therefore you can evenly divide twelve by three with no remainder. Twenty-one, add that two plus the one, that's three. You can divide three by three. This trick works all the way through all the threes. 1 plus 5 is 6. Hmm, you can divide 6 by 3 equally. No remainder. 2 plus 4 is 6. That's so cool. Look, all the ones that start with 3s, they have a digital sum of 3. All the ones that start with, oops, all the ones that start with 6, they have a digital sum of 6. All the ones that start in the 9s column, 1 plus 8, that's 9, you can divide 9 equally by 3. 2 plus 7, that's 9, you can divide 9 equally by 3. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. These can all be divided by 3. But what about something like 48? 4 plus 8 equals 12. You can think of it two ways. 12, yes, I know that I can divide 12 by 3. Or you can say 48 is really like 4 plus 8. And that's 12. Oh, this is terrible handwriting. That's 12. But then you can keep going until it's a single digit. 1 plus 2 is 3. And you can evenly divide 3 by 3. So this is how we prove that any number, even if it's a crazy big number like 372, you can be like, okay, 3 plus 7, that's 10. Plus 2, that's 12. You can either say, okay, yeah, I know I can divide 12 by 3. Or you can keep going and add the 1 plus the 2 and make that 3. And then you know, even though 372 is a really big crazy number, that you will get no remainder if you divide 372 by 3. Pretty cool. I'm going to pause for a second because I just got an alert that I need to plug my laptop in. So I'll be right back. Okay, I plugged my laptop in. Always important to have your charger. Let's talk about fours. Fours, I'm going to be honest with you, not my favorite rule. I really think about fours as, can I divide that number by two? And does that make an even number so that I can divide it again by two? Because two times two is four. But another way to think about it is that the last two digits are divisible by four. Now, when we look at multiples of four here, we can see another cool pattern. Um, but these are all two digit numbers. So I'm actually going to make my point showing you even bigger numbers. Going 101 to 200, here are the ones that are divisible by four. If you just look at the last two numbers, the last two digits in a problem, like 0, 4. Oh, I can divide 4 by 4, so therefore 104 is going to be divisible by 4 with no remainder. If I have um, 176, then I just need to worry about the 76. And if I can figure out that, yes, 76 is divisible by 4, then I know that the whole number, however long it is, is also divisible by 4. Or you could check with yourself and divide 176 by 2. And then if it's an even number, you know you could divide by 2 again. So therefore, it is divisible by 4. Either strategy. Fives are nice and easy. Here are my multiples of 5. You can notice 
that they either end in a 5 or they end in a 0. That's how you know you can divide something by 5 with no remainder. 6s are really cool. We're going to start with the rule. It's divisible by both 2 and 3. Maybe that's because 2 times 3 equals 6. I'm going to show you the multiples of 2 in pink. Here they are. The multiples of 3 in green. There they are. And you can kind of see it gets a little darker where the, the pink covers the green because it's like both pink and green. I'm even going to make them more obvious for you. I'm going to highlight them like this. These are my multiples of 6s. And they're where my multiples of 2s and my multiples of 3 cross. So if you know your multiples of 3s, then you know that 12 is a multiple of 3 and it's a multiple of 2. That means you can divide it by 6. It's divisible by both 2 and 3. Then it's divisible by 6. That's the 6s rule. Don't really have a rule for 7s. I'm skipping the rule for 8s because it's, again, kind of like the 4 is not the most helpful. Rules for dividing something by 9. Just like for 3s, if my digital sum, when I add up all the digits, is divisible by 9, then I can divide that whole number by 9, and I will not have a remainder. So you can see here, um, like 7 plus 2, that's 9. Therefore, I can divide 72 by 9 and not have a remainder. 9 plus 9 over here, this 99, that's 18. You can either think about 18 and say, yes, I know I can divide 18 by 9, or you can then take that 18 and add the 1 plus the 8 and say, oh, that's 9. Yep, I can divide this whole number by 9s. And last but not least, probably, honestly, in my opinion, the easiest one. It's divisible by 10 if it ends in a 0, because all the multiples of 10 end in 0. Therefore, you can turn around and divide them by 10. And those are our divisibility rules.